In this short video, we are going to discuss the concept of the limit. Recall that we saw two problems, the velocity problem and the tangent line problem. And they had something in common. We are able to estimate or approximate the quantity that we were looking for. And we were able to improve that estimate by choosing numbers I got closer and closer to a specific number and then looking at the output and putting that into our formula. In the case of the velocity problem, we could calculate the average velocity and over an interval and by choosing values of t that were closer and closer to the point where we wanted to know the exact velocity, we got better and better estimates. In the tangent line problem, we were saying that if we could use the slope of the secant line as an estimate for the slope of the tangent line, and if our second point, our value of x, got closer and closer to a, we would get a better and better approximation. So we want to formalize that because really the best estimate in either case is when t is arbitrarily close to a or x is arbitrarily close to a. So we need to formally say, well, what number would the average velocity approach as t approaches a? So in general, so we're going to leave our, our uh, velocity problem for a minute and let's just focus on the tangent line problem. We could define the slope of the secant line as a function of x, and we'd like to know what does that slope approach as x gets arbitrarily close to a. This is the idea behind the limit of a function. So let's look at an informal definition. Suppose I have a function f. Now this is a different f from the f that we were looking at in the tangent line problem. This is just some generic general f. And suppose that it's defined when x is near the number a. We say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l. If we can make the values of f of x arbitrarily close to l, by restricting x to be sufficiently close to a on either side, but not equal to a. So let's think about this carefully here. First of all, when we say x is near the number a, that means x is in some open interval, could be very tiny, which is centered at the number a. By having an open interval, we're guaranteed that there's a little bit of space to the left and a little bit of space to the right of A where X could be chosen. Then this notation goes all together. So we have the LIM. Underneath it, we have the X with the arrow and then A. So that's limit of f of x as x approaches a equals l. So my l is an output value, it is a y value, my a is an x value. So notice that what we're going to do here is make the values of f of x. So we're going to force, if this limit exists, if this number l exists, that means we can force the values of f of x to be as close as we want to L by choosing x to be sufficiently close to A. And if you recall, back in the velocity problem and the tangent line problem, that's exactly what we did. We chose values of x or of t which were closer and closer to A until we were satisfied that we had a very good approximation. Also, we really don't care what happens when x equals a. 
what matters is what happens when x is close to a. Another way that we could write this instead of writing the limit notation with the LIM is we could use this arrow notation. So here we would say that f of x approaches L as x approaches A. What does this mean graphically? Well, what this says is that as I choose values of x closer to A, I'm going to force the graph of f of x the y-coordinates of the graph of f of x to get closer and closer to the limit value L. Now, with almost every function that we've encountered so far, this just always happens. You know, it it's, seems like an obvious thing. But let's look at some other examples where maybe uh, we want to emphasize some of the important conditions. The one important condition is that does not matter what happens to the function when x equals a if we're discussing the limit as x approaches a. So it could be that f of a is defined and f of a is the same as l. It could be that the function is not defined when x equals a. There's a hole in the graph but the y-coordinate of, of the whole is our limit value. And so the limit still exists. Or we could have a hole in that portion of the graph, but then the function is redefined at some other point. Even in that case, the function value doesn't impact the limit value. The limit value is still L. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the concept of the limit.